Well, welcome back. You caught me in the middle of making some, I got four PIDs up here on the shelf I'm putting together. Each one is a little bit different. They're custom made. Oh, here's the reason that I got you today. And thanks for joining us. Uh, please subscribe below, or yeah, comment below and subscribe when you get a chance. Uh, it really makes a big difference. Okay, we're, we're going to do a video today on um, the differences between alcohol by volume and proof. I get these calls all the time, and I just want to make sure I clear the air so everybody understands, uh, because there is a divide, a big difference between alcohol by volume in your fermenter and alcohol by volume of your finished product. And the two shall never cross. One does not affect the other. I'll show you. But first, let me tell you this. You know, there are three channels on uh, YouTube, and of course, there's thousands of them out there. And I get these comments a lot, too, is that um, the Bearded and Board and Jesse from Stillet, two great channels right there. Um, of that, if you have, if you subscribe to either one of those, and this one, you have the trifecta. Uh, because in my opinion, you're, the most accurate information and the most widely shared uh, happens to be these three. And um, it, you would be well served by, just check them out, all right? And then additionally, yes, it does make a difference to YouTube producers. Uh, we get nothing out of this except for the, the joy and the love in sharing all this information. So, subscriptions matter. So, if you haven't, if you're just watching it for the first time and you have nothing else to do, just hit the subscribe button. We get credit. YouTube recognizes us, and uh, we move on. Uh, cost you absolutely nothing. Now, on to what we want to talk about. You know, I have, if you want to go faster in your car, here's an analogy for you. If you want to go fast in your car, what do you do? Simply, you push the gas pedal. Increases the speed or decreases the speed if you let it up. Fair enough. Let me ask you this. If you pull up to the gas pump, and you see that high octane, super premium gas, is your thought, well, I'll just put that high octane premium in the tank and I'll go faster. No, of course not. Because the gas doesn't make the car go faster. It may be a little bit more efficient, but it's not the gas that makes the car go faster. It's you with your process, increasing the throttle. Okay. By the same token, you pull up to that gas pump and you see the regular standard unleaded, I, I can't remember what its rating is, uh, but if you, walk, if you pull up that, you go, yeah, I'm going to put the low grade in today. And yeah, because I, I really don't like going that fast. It really makes no difference in what type of gasoline you put in the tank because the car is going to go. It's just you. Use that same analogy when it comes to alcohol percentage uh, ABV in your fermenter versus alcohol percentage proof in your process. And let me demonstrate why. Yeah, you guessed it. I'm gonna need the whiteboard real quick here. Um, so, hey, by the way, an update on our corn that's been fermenting for about five days. I've kept it at uh, 76 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 and a half uh, Celsius. Uh, and that seems to have done the trick. Remember we talked about that, you know, the higher temperature produces that real stenchy off odor that I call, it's, it's either the level of ass or two asses. It, it can be really bad. Uh, family complains, wife complains, you don't want to walk in the room. Ferment at a lower temperature, and I've maintained this one at 76, again, 24.4, 24.5 Celsius, uh, and there's no odor. As a matter of fact, the first couple of days, it was like bread. It was just nice and a sweet aroma. Uh, so. I'm on day five, uh, and it's almost finished. Now, here we go. You know that George uses, this is just my own personal data point because I find it easier to work with, 1.090 is my target, my target for my gravity. When I check the gravity with my hydrometer. And the reason I use that is because it produces about 12% alcohol by volume in my, in my fermenter. That's really 22 bricks, if you're going to use the brick scale. 
Now, what that means is, is that of this five gallons or 19 liters, that right in here, I've got 12% of that is alcohol, ethyl, ethanol. So now, of course, yeah, there's some methanol in there, some acetone, some other things that you're going to remove, but it's not that much. So let's, let's, let's not get confused about all that. We're just going to talk about raw numbers. So 12% of that volume is alcohol. Hey, here's a surprise for you. You know, you can't make any more alcohol. You've achieved, once fermentation's finished, and you're not making it, you're just creating the environment for your yeast to produce it. Your yeast make the alcohol, okay? They make it, you separate it. So you've got 12% alcohol by volume. You're not gonna get any more, don't care what you do or how you do it, you're not gonna get any more out of that fermenter, period. Follow me? Now, this, if we were using, if my gravity started at 1.116, then I'd have 15% in here instead of 12%. So that kind of makes sense. More fermentable sugars, more ethyl alcohol. Now remember, also, if you have an increased gravity, your fermentation time is going to increase a little bit as well. See, these are all connected. So, if when I, and I get a call and someone says, George, I, I put everything in there and it fermented, and man, two days later it stopped. My first question is always going to be what? You got it. What was your initial gravity? Usually the answer is, well, let me tell you. Well, when someone starts off an answer with, well, let me tell you, uh, you know they didn't do it. <laughs> Finally it comes out, they skip that step, and that's okay. So my guess is, I'll tell them, say, well, hey, you probably had a really low specific gravity because, hell, yeast didn't take long at all to eat all that. So you see it has a definite, it's, it's a direct correlation. Low specific gravity or low bricks, quicker time. Higher specific gravity, higher bricks. It's going to take a little bit longer because there's a lot more to do in there. See how simple that is? And these are all linear. I mean, they, they, they just make sense. Think through it clearly instead of trying to outthink it. Ah. Here's what we're going to do. Let's take, for instance, because I'll explain this down. Oh, so there is no more. That's all the alcohol you've got. That's all you're going to ever have, okay? Because you're not going to make any more. You're just going to separate it and collect that. Hmm. <laughs> now, let's take this a step further. And let's take that 10% ABV. And that's, again, the half gallon or 1.9 liters. Uh, and then let's run it through our process. Now, this is separate, okay? 10%, now we're on a separate thing. We're on the process. And you're going to run your still. And if you run your still efficiently and good, you know, you've got good ingredients, good still, and good pro uh, process, you come out with 140 proof. We're all happy with that because you're running a pot still, okay? 140 proof. Now, remember that at 140 proof, it's only 70% ethanol, and the rest of it is water. Uh, you wanted that because you pull over the esters and the flavors and you know all those things that you're looking for um, in a pot still. So what this really equates to at that point is somewhere around three quarters of a gallon, or what's that? Um, two point? Uh, I don't know. Um, that's a half, 1.9, yeah, 2.7, 2.8, whatever the case may be with liters, okay? So that's what you wind up with volume. Uh, because you're going to get more out of it because you've got water as well to the ethanol. Remember, the ethanol, is only, there's only so much there. So, and that's what you're pulling out. Because your process produced 140 proof. And you've done that well. So what? Well... Let's say you run that, you're going to run a reflux, okay? You run that reflux still, and you're kicking out 185 to 190 proof. 
You see, because now we're wanting to make, we want to make vodka, you know, or we want to make a spirit, or bottom line is, I just want to beat my neighbor next door. He's pumping 140 proof. I'm going to show him. I'll do 185. I'll show him. Oh, it, it really doesn't matter at that point. Okay? So you do that, and you run the still, and your process is really good. Well, remember what you end up with. Let's say you got 185 proof. 15 proof left, which is 7% of his water. Mm-hmm. More pure, less flavor. So what are the volumes that you end up with? Well, in this particular case, you'd end up with like, you know, maybe 1.3 quarts. 1.3 quarts is about a liter. Somewhere around a liter is what you wind up with. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Who, who knows? That's the point. But you got this 185 proof. Now, what's that look like in your collection jar? At 140 proof, you've got all of this. Okay? At 185 proof, you're only collecting that much. But there's a big difference now. Now, because the alcohol by volume of your collection, which is measured in proof, is different. If it's a higher volume or higher proof, it's a lower volume. If it's a lower proof, it's a higher volume. And you see how we get there. So, at the end of the day, this figure had nothing to do with these two figures. These two are created by your process, not a derivative of your fermented mash, wash, whatever. So far, so good? Okay. Let's take that 140 proof, and let's say we're going to cut it. Because we, of course we're going to cut it down, and George likes to use like 80 proof. 80 proof is like the industry standard, you know, 40%. Some of them are 41, 42, 43, somewhere in that neighborhood. But I use 40%. It's just an easy figure to work with. Well, now, I've got to add enough water to bring it from 140 down to 80. So I'll take this much alcohol and I'll add probably about this much water, which will give me this much hmm. at 80 proof. My volume changes, my volume goes up. So I'll wind up with probably about, if it's cut, I'll wind up with about two gallons. Okay? Now a gallon equals 3.78 liters. So you double that, that's what two gallons is. So you got quite a bit, you got a little over seven liters. Now, that's this one. So now let's take for example, the 180 proof, or 185 proof. Now see our volume's a little lower, but our proof is really, really high. And remember we talked about that, so it's only 7% of that is water. So now we're going to take that much alcohol, we're going to add that much water to it, and then we're going to make that much. You see how that works? It's plain and simple. It's, du it's direct. When we cut this to 80 proof, we're going to end up with a whopping two gallons. You see, you can neither, you, you can't create any more. This does not create any more. This is only the refinement process, remember, process, that you used to get to this. So there is a, it's like the Grand Canyon divide between this and this. From here to here, it's a Grand Canyon divide. And please don't ever confuse the two. I get it so often. George, I'm going to add an extra five pounds of sugar because I want to boost that proof up. And then we get to talking about it. I'm like, they didn't understand that it has nothing to do. It's only process. Oh, 
Um, it's, it's not that difficult. And oh, by the way, it's just handy information to know about. Remember we talk about that three-legged stool. Ingredients, equipment, and process. All three necessary in order for you to take this hobby that is an art, a science, and a skill that are perfectly married together to produce a good spirit. Now what happens when you remove one of these legs from that still? Well, it's obvious, or from that, you know, from, from your uh, hobby, it falls over. It, follow this, yeah, here we go. <laughs> you, you, you heard the adage, computers, junk in, junk out. Yeah, well watch this. If you've got the best process in the world, you know exactly what you're doing, you got the greatest equipment, gosh, it don't matter. If you're putting junk in, you're gonna get junk out. Your stool falls over. All right, let's put that leg back in there. Okay, you just happen to be getting yours from the great Maharaja of wherever who's got the best grains in the world, okay? So you've got, your, you've got super ingredients. You've got super equipment. You've got the latest and greatest on the market. But you're that person that wants to outthink it, you know? Yeah, by golly, I know what the vaporization temperature is, but I'm going to do this instead because I theorize that it works better this way. Um, or you have no idea what you're doing, and you're not following the process, the simple step-by-step -step guides that we all have been talking about. Well, it falls over. You've got the greatest ingredients. You've got the greatest equipment. You've got a poor process. You have a poor product. And the same thing goes for equipment. You know, just because you have the latest and greatest equipment and you don't know the process, does it make you any better of a distiller? But if you've got this and you've got this, and the equipment you're using is either antiquated, low grade, not quite solid. I don't want to try to, I'm not trying to beat, because there are some great still designs out there that are homemade stills. There are some great stills out there that are not so great. Um, and it's hard to put them into categories. It, it, it just, it really all depends on your equipment. Um, so you don't have to invest hundreds or thousands of dollars into equipment. You can really make a good still. It, it'd be quality equipment, but but you, it's got to have you got to have quality. Jeez, but you can have all of this and poor equipment. And what do you got? Falls over. So, without further ado, we're going to get ready to make another video here in the next day or two. And because a guy named Bobby Claiborne who's been on the phone with me on a regular basis and back and forth email wants to learn more about collecting harnessing yeast and reusing that yeast I'm like yeah that's possible I, I don't normally do it because the yeast is so cheap but for those who want to do that and you've developed your own special strain uh, we're gonna do that show you how to collect it clean it and store it and then reuse it it's, it's really not a difficult process it's it's, it's, it's laborious it's long but it works and don't forget to subscribe share us with your friends all that great stuff and until next time yep you know it happy distilling